You can do this at any time of the year, but now is the best time. And several weeks ago, I got a head start on this by gathering up goat bedding, chicken feathers, grass clippings, and also my favorite ingredient. If you only knew the power of compost, join me and you will become more powerful than you can ever imagine. It is your destiny. And with our combined strength, we can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the farm. I'm Mike the Fit Farmer. And I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> Just a little Star Wars humor. Star Wars was always one of the movies that I enjoyed growing up. And by far my favorite Empire Strikes Back. Hands down, the best. Well, in here, this brooder here, we have some ingredients to make some more good compost. In here we had some goslings and some chicks and they left behind a lot of good ingredients for us to make some more good compost. Raw chicken manure is too strong to put directly in the garden when growing flowers and veggies. It can burn, damage, and even kill your plants. However, it can be a great asset to any garden when it is composted. It helps turn compost into black gold. It also fertilizes the soil, adding nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, even more so than cows and horses. And after gathering all of that, I started to put them together in a pile, alternating nitrogen and carbon, or greens and then browns, and then greens and then browns, and then greens and then browns, until I had a big heap. And with a compost pile, you can do a hot compost or a cold. Cold usually takes about six months, and I really like to do a hot because you can have compost ready in as little as 18 days with the Berkeley method. So that's what I did. I let that pile sit for about four days, and then it was time to turn it. But there was a little problem with my pile. 
Man, this is shrank down a lot. Ooh. Yep, definitely burned down. And I had a really nice pile, probably like this high. But over the past couple days, it shrank down. So that's a sign that I had too much nitrogen into my pile because it just burned it down. It's time to turn this pile around, inside out, and upside down. Because we gotta get this compost pile turned. So before I turn this pile, I need to warm up a little bit. Whether working out at the gym or working in the garden, it is important to warm up your body before any physical activity. Warming up helps raise the body's temperature, increases blood flow to the muscles, and can lessen the chances of soreness and injury. And before turning my compost pile, each time I did a warm up. All right, so I got my arms, shoulders, chest, legs, and heart warmed up, so ready to go here. And as I'm gonna be turning my compost pile, I'm gonna be adding some carbon here, the straw, to help balance out the nitrogen so hopefully it won't be burning things up so fast. So it's time to get to turning. Definitely got a sweat going there. And turning a compost pile, depending on your fitness level, can be anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes, so workout for you early in the morning. But let me show you something. A number of days ago, we had a chicken that died, and I put the chicken inside the compost pile in the middle where the main part of the heat is, and it just cooked it. You can see it right here. It just slow cooked this meat over the past few days, and it's all nice and tender, but I ain't eating it. <laughs> You may have noticed as I was turning the compost pile, I was alternating which hand I was using the pitchfork with. And I do that so that way I work each side of my body equally so that way I'm not creating any imbalances or overworking one area or one side more than the other. And as I was turning the pile, one of the things that I was noticing is I don't need as much carbon as I thought I needed. I just needed more air, which is one of the main ingredients in a compost pile, a good compost pile. It needs nitrogen, it needs carbon, it needs air, and it needs some water. Let's add a little bit of water. Scoop some and put it in there. There we go. After day four, I skipped a day, and then day six, it was time to turn the pile again. So it looks like today it's about one, 20, 125, depending on the spot. I like this thermometer because it's specifically made for compost pile. It shows you what the steady active temperature is for your pile and also shows you where to get it hot. I like to get it just a little bit hotter. You can feel that heat on there. It's all warm. So neat to see that just within a couple turns, the texture and feel of this compost pile is changing. 
drastically. The Berkeley method is what I go by for turning a hot compost pile. It creates ready to use compost in weeks rather than months. In as little as 18 days you can have compost ready to use. After day four with my compost pile, for the most part I turn the pile every other day. And in 21 days, here's what my pile looks like. And bang! Now we have some good looking compost here. And ideally you want your compost pile to be at least one cubic yard. Ours was measuring three feet high by about five feet in diameter. And I am loving it. And you can buy commercial compost, but a lot of times it's mostly just wood chips and branches and newspapers that they have, have blended up. And, and if you want some really high quality compost, you're gonna pay a little bit more for it, but you can make some excellent compost on your own within 18 days. And if you were to buy bags of this stuff, it would be really, really expensive. So why not make your own? But this isn't the only way that you can make compost. You can also make compost like this. Now this is nowhere near as fast as the Berkeley method, but using chickens to make compost is really effective. And besides, they actually do most of the work. <laughs> so at this time of year when there's not a lot of grass for your chickens to eat, if you have chickens, why not have composting chickens? So what you need to do is just add wood chips, leaves, things like that to their area and they'll just scratch around, poop, and add manure to it and, and till it up and blend it together for you. And then months later, you have this good compost to use in the garden. Open it, lay it flat to, <laughs> to break the curl and expand it. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to go outside to do that. Cause I don't think we have enough room in here. I'm not up for turning compost like Mike does because I'm pregnant, but this right here, this is something that I can do. Pick it up this way. And then we have to figure out what diameter we want it. I think we're just gonna make it as big as we can because I know Mike is gonna wanna fill it up. So, these little places are where you attach it to. And the biggest would be right there, but I don't know. Maybe we'll do a little bit of an overlap to make it a little stronger. I need the snap pieces.
There we go. Yep. Got it all together. Thank you, ladies. You're welcome. A good compost ring. One of the mistakes that I've made before is I have made my compost piles a good distance away from our garden. So one of the things I'm trying to do different this time is actually build a compost right near the garden. So that way when you're ready for the compost to actually go in the garden, you don't have to make a long trip somewhere across your homestead to move your compost. So let's put the ring somewhere. Let's go right back here. Right at the edge. So that way right here on the edge can be like our transport area for bringing leaves and when it gets really cold and, and you don't want to go really far away, you can just be right here instead of way down there taking the compost. I know you're not going to want to do that, are you? <laughs> well, we made it as big as possible because I knew you would want to get as much in here as you possibly could. That's right, because we got a bunch of stuff here, organic matter, to use. Yeah, we're gonna make as much good stuff as we can, right? right? This would work for all different kinds of homestead, all different sizes, because you can, you know, make it smaller. And, you know, if you have a more compact homestead and you don't need such a big ring, it would just fit into smaller places a lot easier. Yeah, even if you lived in a city somewhere, this would still work out great. And this is even BPA free, so you're not leaching those toxic chemicals into your compost that you're going to be growing your healthy vegetables in. Well, let's start filling this thing up because we've been raking up some leaves since they are falling at this time of year and we need to put those leaves to use. And which makes it, as I alluded to earlier, the best time to be building your compost is now because you got all this organic matter available. Start putting it to use, harvesting it, collecting it and putting it to use to help you grow better food next growing season. the fun the thumping <laughs> hello sir I wonder if he'll let me get close I don't know you don't spend a whole lot of time around him well I just want to try He likes scaring everybody off. He's like, get away from my woman. I better go back and help Silas up. 